Um, all right, guys. So uh, I'm going over again how to uh, deal with our uh, stirrup handle, and um, what I've done is I've marked a line around this, um, and this so I can tell where the bottom, right here, where the bottom of my um, uh, the kind of the circle where I'm going to start the stirrup is going to be on this side, and it's directly across. So if you remember what I did was that my first um, move here was of course I'm going to score it around where I had that mark again directly across from this one, right? And my first move is to make that um, uh, digesting anaconda uh, snake where it's got a belly, right? So you want it to be tapered. Because this taper, what that taper is going to do again is that it is going to arch it this way. So you have to remember the taper. You must remember the taper, right? And then I'm going to slip, slip and score. Have to slip and score this first one, right? Squish it on. Now the subsequent ones. If I want this to arch, again, I want it to arch, right? A lot of times guys don't finish this top part. You should always. This, it's a tube, you're making a tube. Think tube, 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 right? So again, the kind of um, snake here, right? Swallowed the animal, fat snake, right? So then now I can put this one, and look, I finished my tube, right? This is all put together, fat side down, because if I do subsequent, if every one I do is bigger this side, it's going to arch it arch it like this, right? So if I do a few more, again, and I want this tube to be finished, right? So now each of these are getting a little bit longer, but still a kind of fat snake, you know, swallowing, right? So you can see I can pull those ends off, tapered ends, fat in the middle. And now when I put this next one on, I don't want to kind of always put it on the outside. I can cheat it in a little bit, and that's also going to help me curve it. And again, now that tube is closed. And now it's starting to arch. I'm almost level now. You see how I'm almost level now? Before this was, there's a big difference here. Now, just because of these three coils, I've almost made it level. Right, so one more should do it, and then I can keep arching it. Right. Same, I'm adding the coil, same as how I did my large coil piece. Right. Now I have a nice coil, same as this one. Right. And I'm gonna, this one I started earlier, so this one actually stiffened up. And remember, if I'm ever attaching soft clay to stiff clay, I have to slip and score it. Right? That is a must. All right? I'll be able to tell if these fall apart. I'll be able to tell where you did your good slipping and scoring, where you didn't do it. Right? But if I'm doing soft to soft, I do not need to slip and score. So that was a slip and score because that was soft to hard. All right, getting this nice arch. And again, now I can kind of rock and roll making um, more coils. And I'm actually going to make it go up a little bit first. And I can actually see how those coils are going to fit first. Squish them on. Again. I'm rough so I can get smooth. I'm not worrying about smoothness right now so much as I'm worrying about them being nice connected together. Now, one thing that can happen is that it can start going too far out or instead of being a tube, it's starting to be a big flare, right? You're starting to, to, this is starting to flare out. 
So you remember, what we always can do, so say for instance, if it's starting to flare out, right, I'm gonna add this coil and you can see uh, an example of that, is that um, if I, I have to be careful of where I place my coils. If I place my coils on the outside, outside of this, it's gonna start flaring out. If I always make my coils a little bit smaller, it will keep it like a tube. But say I started to flare it out, right? Say it became more flared out than I want it to be. And by flare, I mean it's narrow down here and wide up here, right? Um, and, and you'll notice that I'm also really utilizing the um, banding wheel. Banding wheel is kind of key here because my hands stay in one position. My hands aren't chasing this thing around. They stay in one position and the piece moves, right? So I can turn it. Right. But again, I always, my trusty surgery, I always can dart it in. So say, again, say this is getting wide, I could take a chunk out of this, my trusty dart, right? I can dart this, right? Fold that in and then boom. Now I narrowed it up again and in fact, I actually made it arch a little bit this way, right? So don't forget the darting technique. It's really kind of gonna be critical for you guys. One thing I want to look at is this shoulder. So the shoulder being the transition point from here to here. I don't want this to be 90 degrees, right? I want this to be almost this nice gradual shoulder. So what I can do is I can actually press this down into it and I'm being very conscious of this and I'm looking at this, making sure that that's a nice kind of gradual curve, right? And that's why I want that. It's, it's not just because of the way it looks. So some of you may want that 90 degree, that's the aesthetic, but this gradual curve is a stronger, it's a stronger curve to do it like that, right? And again, start rough to get smooth, right? So, I can always come back, smooth this out, work it down, work it in, etc. Now, what I've done is I've put in, um, I've put in a, uh, the coils, but I never cut this hole. Remember, this wants to flow through this. I want to flow through this. So I'm actually going to cut this out. Right? And some of you, you get worried because you're like, oh, Mr. Red, I'm going to, you know, it's going to fall in there. Don't worry about that. You can scoop it out, and if it falls in there, not that big a deal. It's just clay, right? So I'm going to make sure that this is nice and smooth on the inside. Now, this volume is connected, right? Or rather, there's two exits, these points. So I'm going to keep going. Two things I want us to be mindful of. Say I have these uh, stirrups is going very far out. I can always take clay, right, and create a buttress, and I can hold this up, right. And in fact, once I start curving this in, right, I may even need to put a buttress in the middle. Some of you guys are going to do your spouts are going to come off in different spots. What I've seen guys do is they did a curve like this and then they did their spout coming off right here. Totally cool. The main metric that I'm looking for is the whole handle. So at some point it has to be handle like a kettlebell. It's some kind of handle that arches, that's connected, and a spout, right? So an arch and a spout, that's what we need. So some of you, if you're doing the very kind of quote unquote traditional, you're gonna do the spout, I'm sorry, the uh, handle and then the spout on top. That's the very traditional way of doing it. Right? But if you remember, if you look at the Moke Pottery examples, sometimes they did figures on theirs too, right? And if, again, if you want to attach figures or anything on the outside, we can get into kind of some um, kind of detailing, embellishment, ornamentation, right? You must um, score this and score the piece you're going to attach. It will not work if you just try to stick it on because this is getting stiff now and we want it to get stiff so we can hold up this stirrup, right? And again, just going over stuff you already know, but just to remind you, just to remind you, you can spray this to make it a little bit softer, but do not drench it. You don't wanna make a swamp on this whole thing. You don't drench it, all right? Okay, so I wanna keep going with my coils. And you're gonna see, uh, I'm gonna keep building them up.